Do we do one of those like 40 minute intros on this podcast, like some of them? They usually just happen because I'll just ramble randomly like this. Mm -hmm. You ever listen to some of those podcasts and you're like, I just want to hear about so-and-so driving so-and-so truck in 1987. But then there's 45 minutes of like, beep, 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 bunch of junk. I don't yeah, know if like, people are getting paid by the minute or what, but. It's probably a duration thing. We don't talk about yoga or spaghetti noodles or anything on this show. I'm out. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of In the Isles presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. I'm your unreliable host, Derek from Vice Grip Garage, and I have the legendary Dirthead Dave here. Hey, I'm Dave Chappelle. I'm like the car one now. Car one. <laughs> We gotta get, well, I gotta say this right away. Dirt Head Shed, that's your YouTube, right? Yep. That's where folks, cause I get asked all the time, where do I find him? You gotta go over to Dirt Head Shed. He's doing, well, you do everything there. I'm doing everything, yeah. I was I was like a low rider guy way before I was a truck guy. So now I'm getting to mix everything in unlike I was able to do on dirt every day. So I got a little bit of everything on there. Try and even get some home repair in the show. It's pretty rad cause you never know <laughs> what you're gonna get. Yeah. It's just a smorgasbord. So I gotta ask you right away, I ask everybody, what is your favorite aisle in O'Reilly Auto Parts? It's the paint aisle. It's the paint aisle for sure. You are a rattle can connoisseur. Yeah, I notice. love it. Um, no, the paint aisle is like where you can go to get good masking tape. They actually carry like quarter inch fine line tape sometimes, so you mm -hmm. can like bust out pinstripe graphics type of stuff. Um, all the Duplicolor paint is there, which there's all kinds of good stuff. So um, they did mix it up lately and they put like different brands of Bondo and stuff in there. So it's a little weird to me, but um, it yeah. is one of my favorite. That's the place I, even if I'm going there for an oil filter, I just happen to cruise the paint aisle. You you take a left through the paint aisle oh, yeah. to the filters. Yeah, yeah, I always. I do that often too. I got to get my DE1634 mm. you know, on the way back. <laughs> But uh, well, that's great. So we were just talking about, well, I guess you were mentioning lowriders were kind of your thing, or mini trucks. <laughs> yep. And you brought, we're actually at Tucson, Arizona at the duct tape drags. Yep, I brought, I brought the least drag, drag racy car ever <laughs> to the drag races. Um, yeah, no, I built a 78 Ford Mustang II, and I don't really even know why. I just kind of, it was like, but it's slammed. It is it's, slammed. It's on the ground. Yeah, it's not fast, um, but it's low. It drags on the ground. Well, maybe you could just like, do you have any plates on the back, like titanium plates or anything? No, it'll drag the whole front K member. Like, just do that down the track. Just yeah. Slow, blow light, sparks. Light this place on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like a good brush fire? Yeah. We did an episode on Roadworthy Rescue's old truck, mm -hmm. uh, Woodford. Woodford the Dually. Is that what you named it? Yeah, remember how much Woodford we went through? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have a bubble in my throat there. But uh, I think it was day four. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I had did. the whole front clip off. There was no <laughs> engine in it. I had another engine torn apart. Dave had the frame cut off yeah. like, at the cab. And he's back there like grinding and welding. We're looking at each other like, uh, <laughs> this is going to be something else. But it turned out fantastic. And yeah, we it. did. Uh, that was pretty cool. That was my first time on a uh, on a Motor Trend show, getting to like airbag something and like lower it a bunch. So that's really kind of where my heart is on a lot of this stuff. And it was pretty cool to finally get to do it on a show. So yeah. So the viewers are probably curious. Where did you learn all this fabrication? Did you go to school for it? Was it a trade school? Did you just no, pick I, it up? So the way it worked um, when I was like. 17, I wanted a mini truck, but I had an 87 Nissan Sentra. Um, and all my buddies were like, they were getting into mini trucks and like slamming them. And my dad had like helped me buy this Sentra. And he was like, nope, you got to keep that one until you're 18. And I was like, this is crap. <laughs> so um, basically, I made sure it didn't pass California emissions anymore so that I couldn't drive it. So Smart. Yeah. It takes off I, first thing. Yeah, yeah. it didn't. It, somehow the carburetor quit working right and the catalytic converter went missing. <laughs> so <laughs> it didn't pass smog anymore. So I sold it or I traded it in on a 93 Toyota pickup. Weird. Yeah. That uh, we took in on trade. I was, a, I was an oil change guy at Saturn. So we took it in on trade and that was my first rig. And the way that I got into the whole scene was, or the fabrication side was, 
I would just drive up to the shop called the Chop Shop. It was like the the one of the first airbag and custom suspension shops around, and this was in like '97. I would drive up there and bug them, and then eventually I was like, we started working on my truck and doing like a four link and airbags on it, and. We did a ton of work on that thing, and I basically was an indentured servant for nine months to pay off the work that we did on it. Okay. So I didn't touch a grind. I didn't touch a welder for for like almost nine months. I just like listened to how the welder's supposed to sound, and I swept the floor, and mm -hmm. I ground plates and stuff like that. And uh, probably watched, soaked yeah. in a lot. It techniques. was it was awesome. Yeah. And then after I basically paid off my bill for building that truck. Um, he offered me a job. Oh, nice. So that okay. was kind of how it all started. So I was working, I was going to college, doing a terrible job at that, and I was changing oil at Saturn, and then nights and weekends I was at the chop shop paying, wow. off, paying off my bill. So you had a really full plate. Yeah. But so, I mean, you've been doing these this four link and, and notching mm -hmm. for a while then. Yeah. Which makes sense, because it was pretty remarkable. Like I did a static drop notch, is that what you call them? Mm -hmm. And it, it seemed daunting to me, just cutting the frame. Yeah. And then you came in and we're just like, ah, we don't need any of this junk, it's gone. And I'm like, oh wow. But just the confidence in being able to vision yeah. or visualize what you need. and Yeah, just like you go and tinker on a carburetor. Mm -hmm. You've been doing that forever. So it's just, yeah, it's fun. I love it. Um, it's really hard nowadays to stand out in the crowd because there's so many so many cool vehicles out there and that type of work's been going on for 30 years now. Right. So it's like building something nowadays that stands out is really difficult and that's kind of why I built that Mustang just because I hadn't seen one yet. Yeah, that's that's a good point. It's There's, because of the power of the interwebs, yeah. we're starting to see all these super talented people. Oh yeah, it's crazy. And of course people with huge budgets and yeah. all those stuff. and. And it's just remarkable seeing a lot. Even here at Duct Tape Drag, some of the stuff rolling yeah. through the pits, I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. that thing is rad. You know what really has messed me up is there's like there's not a definitive line between reality and Photoshop. I get stuff that I actually build compared to Photoshop stuff all the time. Oh, really? And I'm like, dude, who cares? That doesn't have any cutting, grinding, or welding. It's a picture. Right. Like, it's, there's, it's hard to, like, stand out when it's, like, you're also being compared to computer-generated photos of cars. Right, the, the, the realism of it, or yeah. the realistic stuff, yeah. 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 And that's so. why, you know, I keep mentioning this show, because we're obviously here, but a lot of this stuff, you could tell, is grassroots, oh, blue totally. color, late nights, yeah. you know, and you just, I have a lot of respect for that, as I'm sure you do, too, yeah. you know, but... Well, what's been your what's been your favorite build you've ever done? And you can anything on shows or your personal um, stuff. What's the one vehicle you're like, man? If I could own that, I'd have it in a heartbeat. Man, well, I think the one that stands out as being like the most challenging with a really good payoff is got, it has to be the Mad Maxis Off Road Runner mm -hmm. that we did on on Dirt Every Day. That was like. My first like full-time gig at Dirt Every Day was building that car. Um, and it was a 73 Plymouth Roadrunner. Um, it was a total rusty pile. And we built it as like this Mad Max looking four-wheel drive car contraption, kind of like apocalyptic looking thing. Mm -hmm. But went about it as a fabricator rather than like an art car builder. Sure. So it was really neat. Like we, I built a whole frame for it underneath. Like, you know, normally a guy will just put like any old car on a blazer chassis. Right. And they, you know, they sit it up high and then you see this gap and then you see this chassis and like a bunch of- truss it and all that. It's yeah. all this garbage. And uh, that one I actually built frame rails that welded right into the unibody. So it sits low, like it looks proportionate. We put 35s on the front and 40s on the back and we ran different gear ratios front and rear so that it actually like had the right matching the matching gear set yeah. by the time I was done. It was fun. And then we put one of those 5 liter uh, Cummins diesels in it. The oh, the yeah. V8 5 liter out of the out of the Nissan pickups. So it was just this crazy contraption, but it was neat because it was like 
Yeah, it's a crazy looking art car, but it's like the roll cage was fun. Like the chassis was really cool. It was like, more functional over fashion, but it yeah. ended up looking pretty rad. I yeah, it was cool. I did this really wacky, like this roll cage, you know, like the old school, like roll cage, they just do the hoop over the driver. Yeah. So this one I did like a hoop over the driver and came down. And then the other one I did a hoop over the passenger and came down and they like overlapped like each other. Yeah, yeah. it was That's just cool. a bunch of funky stuff that turned out really cool. That's kind of like a road course cage with a yeah. uh, bump over the head. Uh, so we all have those projects. Well, maybe you don't because you're a madman, but we all have those projects that you kind of just get burned out. I and mean, they kind of just mm -hmm. sit in the corner. You get gung-ho every now and then, yeah. but... You, you try just... and buy it something nice once a year so that it sparks <sighs> your interest. Yeah. <laughs> what is, I have plenty of them, trust me. But what is the one project right now you're like, man, I just need to knuckle down and get this thing done? That's my 56 Merc. Yeah. I got a 56 Mercury Metalist. It's a two-door post car. And it is super cool, but I cannot get any motivation to work on it. Um, I, you have, have to go like back to the 50s car show or something. Yeah. And get some... I know. It's got like a, I cut the front frame off and grafted in a to Toyota two-wheel drive pickup front clip. Oh, of course. Yeah. So it's like airbagged and Z'd and it like lays flat That's... on the ground. And it's four linked in the rear with trailing arms, so it lifts a bunch and it lays absolutely on the ground. But what happened is I got all that done and then I pulled the vinyl floor mat out of it and it was just like whole front floor pans are gone. So I lost steam at that point. Okay, but you just grafted in a frame, <laughs> four linked it, did a, it was like words on a chalkboard, yeah. the, the stuff coming out of your mouth, and you're like, oh, it needs a floor pan back. So. <laughs> For me, cars that sit like, oh, that one needs a U joint. I have, let's go get a different project. And you're like, oh, I just need to build a whole new frame and yeah. chassis. If you hear a random happy guy yelling on the intercom, <laughs> it's, uh, we're right next to the, this is a good view of the Drake's. This is right the here. best, yeah. best seat in the house, I think. I think they're doing, is it Tri-Fives shootout up first? I don't know. Did you see some of these Tri-Fives out here? Uh, I saw some really cool looking like gassers, gasser style out there. Yeah. Would you ever build a gasser? I would love to. Oh my God. If I was going to build a drag car. That's right where I'm going. I but want... would it be on bags so it's slammed no, and then it's gasser? No, it'd be <laughs> it'd be pretty traditional. Yeah. I would love to do a unibody gasser like a sixty like a sixty to sixty three Falcon or sixty to sixty two Falcon. I think that would be super fun. They're super lightweight. The chassis is actually strong enough to take some power. You can swing a straight axle under it and a big old nine inch in the back and go for it. I've got a 48 Studebaker that I've been thinking about. Really? Gas here Give me a call. I want to come help. Okay. You heard it. Everybody write this down. Uh, we also did a Jeep project. That was pretty fun. Um, do you do a lot of off-road stuff back home? I mean, you kind of are in the neck of the woods of doing off-road. Are you just too busy to even do um, that stuff? No, I'm, I moved up to like the inland northwest, like northeast Washington five years ago. And I actually moved up there trying to like slow down a little bit because I was in Southern California and I was like, oh, I can move up there and cost of living's a little lower. And uh, I tell you what, I've been going nonstop since I got there. <laughs> I, I want so bad to like hang out and like explore my area and go go four wheeling. I do yeah. get I do get to go four wheeling up there. There isn't that much good wheeling though. Like there's a lot of fire roads and trails. there's a lot of trails, yeah. but there's not many like cool rock gardens. Um, but that being said, I, there's still stuff I haven't seen. So um, I do actually get out in the winter a little bit and go do some snow wheeling. That's really fun. Okay. Like that you, you can take any like boring old logging road and you throw three or five feet of snow on it and all of a sudden it's the, it's time, it's the time of your life. Yeah. What's the one event that you really want to go to that you haven't been to yet or maybe it's something you have been to but you, it's, it's on your to-do um, list every year? I want to go to King of the Hammers as a racer. Oh, that'd be awesome. Um, I've gone to King of the... I've wheeled Johnson Valley um, for years recreationally. And I actually co-drove and crew chiefed on a race car for King of the Hammers for three years, but I've never like driven and raced it. It's become such a wild event that like, it's there's an unlimited class. So like Ultra Four is an unlimited class, which means you or I couldn't compete because we don't have unlimited budget. 
Uh, um, but there's still some grassroots and rookie programs and stock class and stuff like that. So I would really like to build a stock or a stock mod rig. The and, bailing twine class? Yeah. Yeah. And go race it. I think it'd be a blast. That'd be awesome. I was following your Insta letter last year. Weren't you like camping out on the ground when you're doing ping and hammers and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. It's all, it's all like, I don't know, it, all of this stuff. It's like whether we're here or we're out in the middle of the desert doing off-road racing, it's all kind of the same. Everything that it seems like I'm drawn to is always sort of a grassroots, like, homegrown kind of sport, you know? Nothing wrong with that, man. So. So, when you were wrenching at my place, you probably noticed my music playlist is kind of weird. It's pretty similar. You know what's, you know what the crazy thing is, is ever since then, I do play a lot of Christmas music. Yes! Like, <laughs> all through the summer. It's yeah. like, if things get weird in the shop, crank on the Christmas playlist. I'm telling you, man, <laughs> if, if, you, if, you, if you slip and bust a knuckle and it's just your day's not going good, you put on Santa Claus is coming to town, all of a sudden you're like, whatever, I'll yeah. figure it out, you know? Yep. But uh, I always get teased when people come over because we have like classic country to 50s to music, like movie scores, then Christmas music and then metal and then mm -hmm. hip hop. Yeah. What is in your shed? What are you playing when you're when you're working? And obviously it's tough with YouTube because yeah. you can't play when you're filming. Yeah. But what do you listen to? I listen to all the same stuff. Um, I listen, to, uh, lately I've been listening on Pandora, I've been listening to a channel called Texas Country, which is kind of a lot of modern, like West Texas Country. Kinda. Like Midland and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, so like that, that channel's really good. Uh, Limp Biscuit Radio hasn't been letting me down lately. Yeah. If you're ever looking for some good 90s, like Just get, it, get it going. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then all the classic hip hop and all that. So. Yep, I'm the same way. That's good. Uh, I found one called Country before Country was Country was before, cool. Yeah, Country wasn't cool or whatever. Wasn't that Loretta Lynn? Yes. That's been a really good station to me recently. But that's always tough because, like, when you're now when you're doing YouTube, I'm sure you've realized you oh, can't yeah. be blaring the music. You it's can't. It's just silence. Yeah. You know? But ear pods, they help oh, out. Here we go. Um, I used to have my old shop, man, when I was in San Diego, I had huge stereo in it. Big old receiver and amp and like speakers in the walls and subwoofer back behind my desk and it was like that shop rocked and when it was like two in the morning and you're trying to get something done and you're in an industrial complex it was like crank it up it was so good just yeah. cranking yeah you got to get the blood juices flowing mm -hmm. all right so for the learning fabricators out there for the folks that want to become a fabricator what is the one tool you recommend like oh. you just you need to start here this is what i recommend just get going get well my advice has always been get an oxyacetylene torch and get a grinder you can do a lot with those you two. can cut you can bend and you can weld with the oxyacetylene torch and the grinder you can fix all the stuff that you messed up with the oxyacetylene torch there you go um, I'm more of a grinder than a welder myself. Yeah, I and there's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong with it. Like, if you can if you can get an oxyacetylene torch, um, and like you learn how to weld with coat hanger, and you can stick some metal together, it's like you'll do that. By the time you pay off that torch, you're going to be like, I need a MIG welder anyways. So right. you've already got that torch in the in the stable, so you can cut stuff, you can bend U bolts, you can bend things, and uh, you probably won't go back to using it as a welder very often. If you want to like screw around and learn how to silver solder and braze, like that's yeah. also cool. So you can fix like power steering lines later on. But a lot of times you'll not use the oxy torch for welding anymore. So then you need to go out and get yourself a little 110 MIG welder. Mm -hmm. um, my one of choice is always the Hobart Handler 135. That's where I started too, was it's, the Hobart. They it's, good. They're so good. They're like, they're good quality because it's part of the Miller family, but it's like the price is right. Mm -hmm. And uh, the 110 welder, I built many cars just off of that little 110 welder. Make sure you don't use an extension cord on it. The trick, here's the trick. You lose the, the amperage is yeah. in the powers. What I always do, I'll buy a little cheapy 110 welder and then I'll go and I'll buy like 25 feet of heavy gauge, like 10-2 cord 
and uh, wire in like a 20 foot cord, hardwired right into it, so you don't have to use an extension cord. Yeah. Right. And those things rip. They yeah. do so good. If you're wondering why you're not making bacon, and then you got it plugged into a Christmas light extension <laughs> cord. <laughs> that's it, right there. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's really good advice, and and uh, it's a good investment because you're always going. Yeah. I mean, I don't, every day I use a torch. Oh, in yeah. fact, I did weld the faucet in my motorhome the other day. Yeah. You know, it's just one of those things. That's really good advice. Uh, mine's probably a sledgehammer, a sawzall. You know, you've watched me work. Yeah. It's just, and this is a pretty cool tool. It's probably yeah. going to keep around now. What would you call this? A hammer sound? Crescent rammer? <laughs> <laughs> the crammer? <laughs> or slammer? Oh, we're confused, basically. Oh, here we go. First strike pass of the day. My car doesn't sound anything like that. Right. That guy peeled out. Mine will not. Is it automatic? No, it's a stick shift. Oh, just dump it. <laughs> <laughs> I did that, and it, it went, <laughs> and then it puttered away. Like, oh, wow, so it won't even throw a clutch or nothing. Uh -uh. It just... No, it's terrible. <laughs> That's pretty safe. I gotta see what's running here, because I sound healthy. Oh, nice, Nova versus... Uh, Chevelle. Was that a Chevelle, it's like 60 something? Yeah. Those guys were hauling butt. That's what drag cars do. That's what drag cars do. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, what was that, 12 second run? Yeah, 12.5. I thought uh, it looked like a 12. That, uh, That's a mean street I've, car right I've there. never driven anything that fast. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. We should put you in something on here. There's plenty no. of stuff. I, I yeah. no. We're going to run my Buick today, see what it does. Another Nova. Four door. All right, what other questions do I usually ask Brando today? All right, let me ask some questions. Okay. So, Derek. Yes, sir. What have you not built yet that you really want to build? Oh. You have been pushing for years with like car after car after car after car, but that can't be what you really want. Like, I mean, there's gotta be one more thing that you want to like fix up and drive down the road and say, I did that. That's such a tough question because I ha it changes every day. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I want to do that. Oh, yeah. I want to do this. Um, man, I would like to have an eight second drag car. I'd like to build an old school RV. Ooh, I want to do like a, a pre-war, like full restoration. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a bunch. Uh, I'd like to do some sort of European kind of track car. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. There's a, you should come up to my area. I've got friends that have a lot of these cool things. Like there's one guy that swings by my house every once in a while that has an old like late sixties fiberglass camper RV with yes. an LS in it. And oh, that's right. I just talked him into putting hydro boost on it and it finally stops. <laughs> um, yeah. Like there's some cool like there's a cool RV, like vintage camper rally over in Montana that yeah. I want to get to at some point. That'd yeah. be a fun one if you wanted to come out and we yeah. build something. Um, and then another, yeah, like any of those like European track car things look like a blast. That's, that's kind of, it's just trying to find one that I fit in decently or have yeah. the ability to modify it to fit in. Yeah. But make it still streetable, but you can drive it straight onto a track, have mm -hmm. a track day and drive it home. I have a buddy down in San Diego who's, we call him British Mike, and he has a handful. He's sort of the, like, the go-to guy for Cortinas, okay. which is British Ford, little tiny unibody car. Um, and he's got a, uh, he's got Cortinas with, like, small block Fords in them with, like, four twos on them and stuff like that. Wow. Like, really cool. And he, he runs them with the Cobra Club. Cobra Club meets and stuff. Like I think nice. I would love to build a Cortina. Yeah. He also has like a Jim Clark replica uh, Ford Escort, like a 67 Ford Escort. They look cool back in the day. They were so cool. And then they got, Ford got into that egg design yeah. in the 90s. I don't know what happened. Yeah. But so the other thing I want to start getting back into, because I used to do a lot of them, a lot, is uh, bike builds. Oh, okay. I used to do a lot. Like, Hondas, Yamahas, yeah. Suzuki's, Kawasaki's. Oh, you were flipping, you were flipping cafe racers and choppers, right, yeah. for a while? 
They have cafes and hardtails. I'd knock one out in a week, spray paint it, throw yeah. it up for sale, boom, oh. sold. Paco rear half on it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, just cheap and easy, tune them up, air pods, put a sportster tank or mm -hmm. whatever, dirt bike tank. Yeah. Um, I like old, I like mixing dirt bikes with street bikes. 80s street bikes. Oh, yeah. I just love the look. So good. So I might, might get back into that. I just don't know. Did you ever finish that Harley that you had? You had the one that looked like the paint was made out of leather because no. it was all wrinkling off. <laughs> <laughs> I should name that leather face. <laughs> uh, no, that, see, I want to do like a, like a pre war. Um, sidecar kind of oh, throwback with that thing yeah that'd be fun because it's so trash anyway I yeah know. but i got the i got some metal for it and i just need a guy named dave to come over and fabricate some mounts and brackets cut it all up yeah sweet are you any good at sitting in the tower and commentating on races i can't do it at all no it would be so dry and boring <laughs> <laughs> No. I had to go out to this Memphis Speedway and they took me up to the tower to like talk for a minute and it was it was torture. <laughs> it was so bad. Yeah, because you try so hard not to have dead air, but yeah. at some point you're just rambling. What you got? Well, we're going to move on to a part of the... We, see, this is a discussion Dulcich and I had. Is it a segment or part of a segment? We still don't know what to call it. It's a segment. Segment. Yeah. I think it's officially a segment. Called Help Me Understand. This is where fans email in with questions and we got to try to help them figure out what to do. Oh, so we're, this is like the tech tech portion of the it's magazine. The tech hotline, yep. So this is Joel H. He's acquired a 91 Ford Bronco. Uh huh. Oh. The, old, the old juice box, yeah, yeah. right? Yep, yep. Zero Such dollars for spent in acquisition. Good job. Wow. The motor is shot. He got and, ripped uh, off. The block is cracked. <laughs> <laughs> Demand your money back yeah. now. Uh, he's a Ford guy, but he uh, wants to maybe LS swap it. But is that sacrilegious? Should he go the LS route, or should he just replace it with 351 again? Um, knowing that it's already shot, I'd LS swap it. There's brackets and kit parts and all that available for that thing. Yeah, and the LS is going to be a little bit lighter, so you'd be able to jump it a little bit higher. Twice the horsepower. Yeah. Yeah. I I had one of those. I had an 88 with a fuel injected 351, and it was total garbage. Yeah, I would I would agree if you could swing it, do the L. I guess it depends on your budget, because keep in mind there is no budget LS swap really. Yeah. But if you could pull it off, definitely do the LS, even if you got to save and. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to put a 351, then you're back in 1991 again. Yeah, but he could he could junkyard 302 swap it and put a carburetor on it and be driving it this week. That's true. So yeah. that's also an option. Yeah, that's true. I guess, it, do you need to drive it? Is it a project? Is it yeah. getting you to work? Um, there's some options out there. All right, let me find another one here. Okay, we got Tony S. that says, help me understand. He has a 72 two-door Nova, canary yellow. That's mm -hmm. beautiful, nice color. I started driving him when he turned 14. Mm. Uh, but then life happened, and it's been sitting for 30 years. It needs an engine, it needs transmission, suspension, electrical paint, fuel system. He says, where do I start? What do you think? Um, I would start by building a 350 on a stand. Just start throwing together a little small block Chevy for it. The yep. rest will kind of follow suit. Once yep. you spend the money on the engine, you'll think you're most of the way there, and then you'll start plumbing brakes, and you'll be like, dang it, I'm broke. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Should have bought those wheels. Yeah. Shoot. Definitely don't buy the wheels and tires yet, because yeah. I've had more sets of tires go bad while I'm building something. Oh, ain't that the truth. Yeah, no, I agree. I always, my advice is always do whatever you can that's affordable and quick to just get it on the road yeah. so you can enjoy it. Otherwise, you will get, like we were talking earlier, burnt out. Yeah. And you're not going to want to finish the project. So slap together a little small block Chevy, throw it in the thing, go eat some ice cream with it. Yeah. I mean, I guarantee you, he says it needs paint and body and it needs everything. It probably still has a drive shaft that's bolted up to a rear axle. It yeah. probably still has brake lines. Like, don't make the biggest project out of it. Like. The stop, stock brakes were fine for 
a hundred years. Why are they bad now? Yep. Like, just put it together. Yeah, get it on the road and do the thing. Well, I think that's going to do it for this episode. We've got a lot of drag racing going on, and we are missing it. We've got to go out and check this out. Thank you for being on the show. Appreciate for having it very me. much. It's been a lot of fun. And again, please check out Dirthead Jet. You're going to love it. And check out Vice Grip Garage if you can. Please subscribe to this channel as well. We've got more great podcast interview things, whatever these are, coming up soon. Podcast interviews. Ciao.